Well, hello, hello there, dear folks and fellow tubers. My name is Nuclear Scality7, and in today's video, we will be doing part 9 of my original 2012 Mark of the Ninja walkthrough and Let's Play series. And the name of the level we will be on today is called simply A Shattered Stronghold. And as you can tell, it's a quite a bit different setting, although no less colorful and gothic setting from the Eastern European levels we did last time we played this level. But this is set in an ancient Middle Eastern place called Tabriz. These bandits are tricky and ruthless. Watch out for traps. And whatever you do, don't get caught. They'll torture you for days and let the insects finish you off. Seeing if there's anything important here I don't want to miss out on. Now notice those objects, black objects, the flashing red lights. Those are bombs, and they will kill you if you run into them especially if they've fallen so yeah you really want to be careful of those things in fact here's one here so i'm just going to crawl up on this ledge above them so we really want to of course be careful about those no doubt in fact i'm going to go slightly differently up here just to avoid any chances of First, though, let's grab a few goodies down here. And those things there, those also activate traps, so we really want to avoid those. Ah, artifact recovered. Ah. Okay. That was a bit faulty, I'll be the first to admit it, but hey. The wood is rotting. The stone is crumbling. Does anyone still live out here? All right. There's this one YouTuber who did perfectly at this level. It was nuts. I mean, it's like I don't know how he did it, but he was awesome. As a programmer, I didn't spend as much time as I should have actually playing the game until it was nearly complete. It's easy to get tunnel vision looking at only the parts of the game that I'm working on at the moment. As a result, I didn't really know anything about the world three levels until they were mostly complete design and art-wise. When I finally did manage to carve out time to play through the whole game, it was a pleasant surprise to come into this new environment after staring at the world one and two environments for so long. Not only was it great to see the new visuals, but the traps and bombs forced me to rethink the way I was playing and gave me a new appreciation for experimenting with gameplay instead of just playing the most familiar way I knew about from all of my time quickly testing my own work. Brick Miles, Programmer. Just see if there's anything, any goodies in here. I'm gonna go up here just to avoid those bombs, of course. Nope. Okay, so we gotta go somewhere over here. No trace. No trace. But my Middle Eastern accent. Gonna just show you an example of what that does. Luckily, that was something that was very easy to avoid. It's just an object that fell down. But some of these traps will also activate darts, which can skewer you in no time. And of course, I had to accidentally get detected. Here, move it. Hey, we're coming for you. He's here. Here, move it. He's still here. I know. Coming for you. We're coming for you in my Middle Eastern accent. 
And of course, I got shot down by them before I could escape. I do that a little differently. Just had to go ahead and take him out. I will do, I guess, mandatory kills if it's again just mandatory. Stupid Sam. I can't see a thing. There are more traps inside. Remember to use the mark of farsight so you'll know what you're getting into. We're gonna do that right now so we can see what's around us. This is again, as I said earlier in the video, a gothic and Halloween in level in its own right. In fact, it's kind of like the other level we just did, but with, again, sandstorms instead of lava. I mean, instead of stormy and rain. Ah, and I terrorized that one guy. So technically, I did not get detected. I'm gonna go ahead and just... We are coming for you. There we go. Excellent. And his history. Yeah. Ah. Now, notice that there's a spike pit over there. And yes, we will die if we fall into that. <laughs> the half -dither. I think it's important to ensure the game's tone slash atmosphere match its mechanics. In the ruins world, we want it to feel unstable and unreliable to upset the player's previous confidence and concordance with the story at this point. So we added new traps and hazards like perch points that crumble and platforms slash walls that break away after the player contacts them. One tremendously edifying moment was during playtesting. I asked the participant if they had any thoughts about these levels after our session. He basically described exactly what we had intended with regard to things feeling unstable and unreliable. It was almost word for word what I had written in the overview of these two levels. Pretty satisfying that. Nels Anderson, lead designer. Broken yet, but give it time. He'll give me the tattoos. Not if I break him first. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this. And voila, did an object kill. So quickly run across that. Oh, I almost fell into the spike pit myself. Ah, and here's one of our first scrolls, at least. I don't know how I did that, but I did. We never gave Ninja a backstory, but from Azai's monologue, you could guess that the Hisomu clan, now fallen on hard times, picks its new recruits from the dregs of society. Ninja was probably an orphan or street kid who was picked up by the clan and has never known any other way of life. In some rough sketches, I also ma imagined that Aura was either a sister or a stranger who helped Ninja at a key point in his life. Probably when he was young and helpless. Chris Dolan, writer. My confession. This had better be good. A voice in my ear gives excuses in the tongue I do not speak. It is hot. And I am sinking. Ugh, of course I had to... I wasn't... Dude, you just have to... You're unable to avoid the bombs sometimes, aren't you, dude? <laughs> Voila. Just so he won't be a problem, I'm gonna go ahead and use my bamboo darts to shoot these down. I'll make them a little less of a problem that way. Excellent. Stupid. 
stupid dude just has to... Yep, I can be kind of mean to myself verbally sometimes. That's just how frustrated I get with myself <clears throat> on occasion anyway. Not very but sometimes. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss any scrolls. Gonna go ahead and... Ah, an artifact. Just making sure I didn't miss a scroll or anything. We have him. We have him. Yeah, awesome. Took him out. Uh... I guess there isn't, so let's go to where we were supposed to. Okay. Oh, I forgot that there was a bomb there. Again, I suck at gaming videos compared to the other guy. I forgot his name now. Because you notice how I always run into bombs on accident. gonna Let's just see here. <clears throat> All right. And we meet our old friend here, Dosan. Dosan became a favorite character of mine very quickly, thanks to Michael Dobson's great voice acting in combination with Jeff's design. Considering how much I liked his character, I really didn't get to animate him all that much. Near the end of production, I took a couple days to do a little tribute, inspired by the Samurai Jack Cartoon Network logo, to give him his own little spotlight. Rest in peace, Dozan. Aaron Boutoulier, lead designer. As I said before, there might be sometimes spoilers. Retrieve the keys without using any items. Recover the sumai without taking any damage. Get the tattoo needles without being detected. <clears throat> Previous to the full-scale speech demo that I did for the game, we had samples recorded in-house with one of our artists. These samples were in the game for a while, and despite or maybe because of their horribleness, the whole team got attached to them. As the design went along, they didn't even make sense anymore in the context of most of the levels. But we found they would still fit here, so we had Vince, our VO talent for these guards, redo two of the original lines, complete with copying our artist's accent and delivery. Must have been animal. Matthew Bartitsen, audio department.
is history. Ah, and of course he's terrorized. death we added the sandstorm the, we added the sandstorm hazard to further remove the player's confidence in one of their key advantages the ability to see the enemy before they can be seen initially we had even grander plans for this with the ability to break windows and have the sandstorm blow into buildings and blind enemies it ended up too tricky to implement both technically and artistically though so we opted with just having the sandstorm be active when the player is outside buildings which i think ended up being stronger anyway. Nels Anderson, lead designer. What was that? Come on. Excellent. Ah, that's what I like about the Path of Nightmares costume. Makes it easier to terrorize enemies. Well, that's why it's called the Path of Nightmares, of course. Distracted. Excellent. And he is history. Yeah. I'm afraid he's no longer with us. As you may have noticed, we used lasers to great effect in the previous levels. However, high-tech lasers didn't fit the feel of this level. Instead, we opted for tripwires that would trigger various traps when the player contacted them. While this seems like the same thing, they were actually much trickier to use well. They can't move, they can't be turned off with power, etc. Both Jason and I had to really stretch to come up with interesting challenges that utilize the rope traps. Nels Anderson, lead designer. Voila, and I took him out. <clears throat> Luckily, those are pretty easy traps to avoid, uh, like the other ones we've done thus far. Now, obviously, this is the trickiest of all the challenge levels we've done thus far. So, And again, the other player who did this did this perfectly. I mean, he does it so much more professionally than I could ever even dream of. And of course, I had to run into a bomb on accident. Okay, we have to do that differently, because I'm going to get hit by bombs or spikes if I keep doing that. that sarcastically. Finally, I was doing better that time, because before I was just kind of sucking there. Okay, let's shoot down these bombs with the bamboo darts first, just so they won't be a hazard, at least not nearly as much a hazard anyway. All right. figure out some way to
had to let it kill me because there's no way I'm gonna get past it now. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna... Go all the way up there. I'm gonna take out the bombs first so that they won't be a problem. These as well. think hopefully that did it and I just barely dodged those spike darts and voila here we are excellent I knew of course we were gonna complete that eventually in the sand outside the fortress I kneel the blade in my hand shakes I hold it to my chest with a shame chokes me I crave relief but I force myself to drop the blade. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> Due to the nature of design changes, we were recording new dialogue fairly late in development. While we had wonderful and flexible actors in the recording studio, we started to run into scheduled co- scheduling conflicts, so we decided to bring our recordings in-house. I had always recorded all my lines in my home studio to begin with, so I wasn't afraid of mixing locations and not being able to get it to match. The money we would have spent on studio rental went into purchasing sound treatment for our small testing room. After spending a day hanging acoustic panels, the room was sounding pretty good other than a mysterious ringing sound. Sounds like tinnitus. <clears throat> Turned out the air duct was resonating with a horrible tone. So now before each recording session, I hang the packing blankets, cover the TV and stuff, my office sweater in the duct to dampen it and remove the ringing. Matthew Martinson, audio department. Excellent. <clears throat> oh, that sliced me in half, so we gotta do that differently, of course. I'm just gonna avoid that one, because there's no real way to avoid that one, seems like. Okay. <clears throat> Pisomu Terror Darts. I'm gonna go ahead and buy that one. Voila. Go ahead and use this one. Smoke bomb. Hisomu terror dart. The Sumi is usually kept underground in an airtight chamber. A chamber just like this one. Recover the Sumi without taking any damage. Closer. Get closer. This might seem hard, but it's actually cracked, you notice me. Gonna shatter that one first. Excellent, just to make sure he wouldn't be a problem later on. Shadow the slights so that there's no risk or possibility of enemies noticing me.
Okay, I knew that was going to happen. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there was no real easy way to get around that. That must be the jailer. Who knows what he did to Dasan to try to make him cooperate. Retrieve the keys without using any items. <clears throat> That's our new optional seal. The sniper enemies were one of the first we knew we wanted, but one of the last to be implemented in the game, making them dynamically animate to smoothly follow the point they're aiming at was no small feat. There's no concept of skeletons in our animations. Each individual part of the guard, gun, upper arm, lower arm, is rotated to point at the position based on their relative rotation in the original animation. Tatham Johnson, programmer. <clears throat> okay, unfortunately we need to do that differently. And I'm just going to jump up here. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to use any items because that will fail the optional seal, of course. Excellent. He'll be back. How did I not get noticed there? I don't know, but I didn't, I guess. <clears throat> Excellent. Could go ahead and take him out so he won't be a problem later on. Are you up there? It's him! Hey! It's him! I know I heard something around here. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> unlike regular bamboo darts, the Hisomu terror darts are limited in supply, and unfortunately, they're not infinite. So we have to use them carefully and wisely as such. Excellent. And of course, I was killed getting past that. Okay. 
Okay, <clears throat> and look what we've got here. And unfortunately, I don't have enough money to purchase any of those things. Excellent. He is no longer with us, I'm afraid. When we started Mark of the Ninja, the project was just called Modern Ninja. Unlike the Shank universe, which took shape within one week, we just had a vague idea of a ninja in a modern world. At first, we thought, make, thought it might be a pulpy American ninja sort of thing. We contemplated having him be a war veteran. I am really pulpy American ninja sort of a thing. We contemplated having him be a war veteran. I am really glad we didn't go in that direction. Eventually, we determined that if you put Ninja's universe on a scale of 1 to 10 from reality to fantasy, it should sit at about a 5. The locations would be based on real-world stuff, but heavily exaggerated. There was one afternoon when Jeff and I were sitting in his office trying to figure out the direction we wanted to take, and we just started brainstorm stuff that would be fun to make. <clears throat> Literally, we were saying stuff like, um, let's make a castle city and a desert city and a temple city. It sounds stupid, but at least... It got the ball rolling and we created fiction from there. Sometimes it just, it helps just to think of stuff that's fun and uncomplicated and then figure out how to make it fit. Megan Shaw, lead environment artist. Look, Dosan's tools are up there. I guess they were still hoping they could force Dosan to Get the tattoo needles without being detected. Excellent. Not. Excellent. See how I'm doing this? Excellent. <laughs> he got someone. In addition to the fourth level where you create the burning building destruction. This is the other level where we wanted to make things feel non-linear. We still wanted to avoid moments where the player felt confused or lost though. So we anchored the level at the room where Dosan is captured and the player chooses to go either clockwise or counterclockwise around the three objectives. When we did this though, we discovered another problem in playtesting. It was easy to accidentally miss the objectives and end up really far away from them. So we added the additional VO and brief camera pushes just so the player would realized they were nearing one of the objectives. Nels Anderson, lead designer. There we go. You can hide anywhere, anytime by squeezing into this cardboard box. It may seem crude, but surprisingly effective. Interesting. You can hide anywhere, anytime by squeezing into this cardboard box. It may seem crude, but surprisingly effective. I guess people just always expect there to be boxes lying around everywhere. You will not be so lucky twice. 
Luckily, it can't fail any optional seals. And here's what I'm going to do. Excellent. I tied for a moment. with us, I'm afraid. All right. Big Mac Davis, a big Mac. Oops, said that without thinking. All right, just seeing if there's a scroll somewhere else around here. Seeing if it happens to be over there. They're all over me! They're all over me! Ah! Oops, that was stupid. And what I was more worried about if it is if it activated. <laughs> I 
Excellent. Hear something. Hey, hey, someone is here. Hey, he's here. Let's just skip that part. Can I find him? Or can I find him? Excellent. <clears throat> And of course, it got me before I could get out of the way. Dude, you just can't avoid that, can't you? <laughs> 